Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, January 9th SIG release mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, it's the first one of 2024. Hope everybody had a great end of year, new year. Um, I'm going to drop the agenda into the chat. Uh, if anybody would like to take notes, that would be super dope. Um, we will give it one more minute, I guess, to see if anybody else joins us, and then we'll kick things off. And if you would like to um, add your name to the uh, attendee list in the uh, the January 9th meeting section, that would be super great, just so we have a, an idea of who is here. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, again, welcome everybody to the Tuesday, January 9th SIG release meeting. Um, my name is Jeremy, I'll be the host today. Uh, before we get started, just a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and will be available on YouTube. And this meeting is covered by the CNCF Code of Conduct. So uh, you're agreed by participating in the meeting, you're agreeing to abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct, uh, which generally just means be, uh, be excellent to one another. And with that, we will kick off the agenda. Uh, we like to start these meetings out by welcoming new folks, um, giving folks an opportunity to, um, to introduce themselves. So if you are new to this meeting or you haven't been here in a while, go ahead and uh, come off mute and you can introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about what, what your interest in SIG release is and we'll welcome you. Okay. Uh... Eric, uh, I can go first. Uh, so I'm new to this meeting as well as I joined last uh, Tuesday as well, but I think it was got canceled. Uh, so my name is Rachit. I am from Bangalore, India. I'm a, a kind of DevOps engineer. Uh, mostly I'm working into the service mesh and Kubernetes side. Uh, comes up with the around 11 years of experience. Uh, it's, uh, small amount of open source contribution into the contour side uh, and others as well. So yeah, just looking uh, some more uh, contribution if I can make. Yeah, yeah that's it from my side. Rick. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? All right. Well, if you would like to say hi in uh, chat, go ahead and do that as well. Uh, we'll move on to our sub-project updates now. Uh, we'll start with the patch releases. Um, does any, Marco, do you want to handle this one? looks like you added some content underneath of general yeah. updates. I can go ahead there. I added a few notes. Uh, patch releases. The general update is that the patch releases are scheduled for the next week, Wednesday. And the cherry pick deadline is this Friday, uh, January 12th. Uh, I am planning to start having cherry picks tomorrow. I have seen that some folks have been uh, leaving a message on the single release and release actually Eric's like channels. Uh, I want to let you all know that we are aware and uh, given that we had holidays and some of us were on vacations. Uh, we will start picking up cherry picks tomorrow when we will have everything that is ready much by Friday. And I'm also planning to send out a notification to Kubernetes them uh, tomorrow to remind everyone of the cherry pick deadline. Uh, speaking of uh, actual items that help what, what it, if you have release manager or release manager associates that want to volunteer to take care of cutting patch releases, uh, please let us know in the release manager channel. I will probably post a message here as well after the meeting. So yeah, if you're interested to take care of cutting patch releases, you're welcome. I just dropped a note into release, into release engineering to ask for volunteers. I would, would, would volunteer to do it, but I'm going to be out all next week, so I can't. I can help uh, in the EU, European time zone if needed, but it would be also nice to see other folks involved with this as well. Well, I can follow up with some uh, folks in U.S. time that are not in the meeting today. 
Do we have any questions regarding patch releases? Okay, I will take that as a no. Speaking of the OBS packages, uh, I'm working on analyzing traffic to the legacy, legacy package repositories, and I'm hoping to have some results in the next couple of days. Hopefully, you're already something tomorrow, but uh, we will see. And I actually just got the permissions to do that yesterday evening. So I'm working on some queries and like trying to visualize everything and stuff like that. So I hope that something will be ready this week. Uh, and uh, the other update is that it is just working on implementing OBS CLI and the new repo has been created for this project in Kubernetes 6. I left the a link to the repo in the meeting minutes. Uh, if you are interested in how everything works, but to contribute, uh, prefer to take a look and to reach out to us in the release management channel. Uh, Nitish is also going to do a presentation about the LFX project and everything we did in this meeting later on. And if there is anything that you would like to help, I left a link for the project board in the action items that have quoted. So if you find anything ticket that is interesting to you, you can reach out to us. Any questions about the OBS packages before we move on? Okay, and I'm not sure if you have any updates for the supply chain security. I don't think we have any concrete updates. I think a general update for anybody that hasn't been in the last couple of meetings. Um, Puerco and I met with um, Rita from the SRC and some folks from SIG Security Tooling to talk about some general things that we had kind of kicking around, perhaps like producing VEX documents, maybe rethinking how we generate the um, the CVE feed, how we generate and pass um, information about the CVEs to the release team in a more unified, cohesive way. And I think um, Adolfo had started to look at maybe a proof of concept around that. Um, I'll follow up with him offline because uh, I, think, I think we were going to talk about it after the after the new year, but he's out today. Um, but that's just something that has been uh, something we've been discussing. So I think we'll see some some things come up around that in the next few weeks. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. Uh, anything else on the release engineering sub team? All right. Well, I see we have a uh, cat here from the release team. Do you want to give us an update, sneak peek, anything else about mm -hmm. the 130 release? Uh, sure. Um, shadow selection is being finalized right now, but uh, most of the onboarding has been done aside from updating uh, roles for shadows that I can't publicly announce until the 12th anyway. Um, the schedule is final and is available for y'all to look at. Uh, unfortunately, KubeCon is super duper early this year. So it falls smack dab in the middle of week 11, which is unpleasant. That's uh, historically been a kind of busy week, but we moved things around to accommodate it. And now it's, it's a little bit light in week 11. Um, 130 will also do two things that are new for the release team. Uh, CI signal and bug triage have been merged into one team called release signal. And we are also enforcing a docs freeze this time around. So where traditionally the last deadline for docs in the release cycle was a PR ready to merge deadline that people kind of treated as like a soft deadline. Uh, now it is docs freeze and there is an exception request process exactly like the ones used by enhancements for any people who think that they are going to miss the docs deadline. So exact same process you use for enhancements. You got to send an email. You've got some questions to, to answer about uh, the impact of missing this and how much extra time you need and the priority of it, um, but that that hopefully makes things a lot easier on the docs sub team and on SIG docs moving forward. Um, the end of the the release has been very very chaotic and difficult for SIG docs uh, recently because of people treating that deadline as soft. So 
I'm, I'm hoping that makes things less painful. Um, but we're, we're good right now. Just getting things rolling. Thank you for the update. Any questions for the release team? All right. When does the uh, first release team meeting happen? Uh, it happens this Wednesday, though it will likely be uh, only the sub team leads and the lead shadows. Um, but it is already in the release team calendar. Awesome. Thanks. You're so welcome. Okie dokie. Let's move on to our open discussion items. And we'll start with um, Natish. Do you want to talk about your LFX project? And I assume you probably sure. want to share screen. So let me uh, let me make you co-host so you can do that. Okay, you should be able to share now. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm just taking a little time. All right. Um, let, let me share the screen. Um, I hope the screen is uh, completely visible. Yep, looks good. All right. Um, yeah, so hi there, everyone. My name is Natish, and uh, I have worked as an Linux Foundation mentee with the Kubernetes release engineering team um, uh, in the fall batch for September 2023 to November 2023. Uh, so my mentors were Marco and Carlos. Um, so this is a general presentation on what are the things that we have done over these three months, right? Uh, what was my experience contributing to this project and what are the areas that you also can contribute to? Uh, because there's a lot of things that needs to be done. Of course, uh, it's never ending project. So there's a lot of things that needs to be done, but in this presentation, we're going to take a look at that. Before we get started, just wanted to clarify that I'm not not so good in making presentations, so I'll be mostly focusing on making hands-on demos. I think that's way better approach. So uh, my name is Nadesh. I'm currently working as an intern at Nenmata Company, which is the creator of Kavana Project. Um, apart from the Kubernetes, apart from the Linux Foundation mentorship program, I've also previously contributed to the Contribux comms. Um, Fun fact is that I also gave my first talk, first talk at KubeCon North America, which in 2023, that was a pretty good experience so far. And uh, another thing is that the first Spotlight blog and the SIG release is coming next week. Uh, I've written it, so we can wait for that as well. But yeah, that being said, let's proceed to the presentation. So basically this was a project description that was uh, present on a Linux Foundation website, which was building a Go library and a CLI tool for interacting with open build services platform. So now that the first question that generally comes to our mind is like, why why do you need this project at the first place, right? So, so the thing is that um, Kubernetes is planning to use the open build services platform to uh, manage and publish their own packages. So, the thing is that with open build services platform is that um, it already contains a CLI tool. There are basically there are three ways to that how you can use your the open build services platform at the very first place. The first one is the CLI tool. Uh, second one is web UI, and the third one is by the API calls as well, right? So the thing with the web UI is that uh, you 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 have to manually do the task. Sometimes you have to create the packages. So the first thing is you have to create the project and under the project, you have to create the packages. And then under the packages, you have to create the sub packages. So it goes like a hierarchy in between like that, right? Um, but you can also do this with the help of a command line tool, which was OSC that was written in Python, right? So uh, that was not so compatible because it was also error prone because you have to manually type all the commands, big, big, long, long commands. So that was not a good approach and that was also error prone. So what Kubernetes decided, like um, let's build a, let's build a CLI tool that could be used in place of OSC because um, now the thing is that uh, 
we were working mostly with the Go project, right? So, uh, and the OSC tool that was existed by the uh, Open Build Services platform, um, it was written uh, basically in Python. So we need something that is that we can generally integrate with um, Go, right? So um, all the open build services platform provide multiple libraries that you can use to build a CLI tool, but those are not compatible with Go. Basically, these were in some other languages. So, so our first problem was um, in order to remove these imperative commands, we need to build some sort of CLI tool that in such a way such that we write a declarative file and we mention all the packages and it projects, everything in like that. And we build a CLI tool that will be interacting with the open build services library that might have been built or that might not have been built in Go. And then that is how we can use it. But we found that uh, the open build services platform does not have any library that is written in Go or does not have any CLI tool that was written in Go probably. So we could not use that, right? Uh, so that was the LFX mentorship project to build a, to build a CLI tool in Go and also to build a library. So the CLI tool will be using that library, means calling those functions inside it, and uh, then doing a lot of things under the hood, which can be uh, further explained as well. Uh, that being said, the main point here is that uh, the existing CLI tool is used to generally do the imperative way. And now with the existence of our own tool, which the Kubernetes is creating, uh, we can do it in a declarative way. So we'll be having an example manifest in which we'll be describing all the root project um, projects. Under the project, we'll be having packages section. The packages will be having uh, sub projects and each thing will be like that. So we'll be using some kind of reconcile command for a CLI tool that will automatically be comparing the, um, the open build services remote packages and the, the local packages that we have declared in the YAML manifest. So you can take a look at that as well. So the screen has already been shared. So let me just go through the um, platform. So this is basically the open build services platform. And in case if any one of you would like try something out of it, uh, the first basic thing that we need to go is here is like go to your home project and you will understand like uh, what are the things that needs to be done here as well. So we'll go through it like there are repository section, there is a monitor section, and then there's a sub project section as well. Uh, if you can also take a look at uh, how the Kubernetes one is. Um, so just like, so now home Litish is basically a project, right? Under this project, there can be multiple sub projects, although it's not here, but similarly, um, it can also have, mm. so each sub project can also have multiple uh, packages under it and each package can have like sub packages under it. So it's kind of a hierarchy that was built here. So th that is what I was basically saying. This is a basically the web UI. So if you want to play with that, like you have to manually do it, right? And it's a, it's not a good approach and it's also error prone, right? The second way is uh, the API. You can do it, you can also call the API. So if you basically like, um, just let me search, it was, yeah, api.opensuse.hh probably. Um, yeah, here is it. So, so this was a, basically this um, OpenSUSE open build services API that generally de depicts how you can use uh, open build services platform API in your own code base and you can call the API functions, right? Uh, so basically these were all the methods that were present here. So, so my first work was basically to design a library and now you might ask me where is that library, right? So if you go into the first thing, uh, the Kubernetes sex repository, uh, especially under this release SDK, we'll find here something like OBS that is written here, right? So uh, again, mentioning this thing, uh, there are a lot of things that needs to be done here, right? But you can also go through the uh, code base as well, and you can try to understand. It's not that difficult, very honestly. Um, and shout out to Marco and Carlos. They have literally done a lot of good things here. Like literally told me like how the things would actually look like. So it would better help me as a person on understanding how to think according to a user perspective, right? So you can definitely go through this uh, three files and try to understand what are the things that are working here, right? Uh, so this was basically a library. Now the library has been built, okay. Uh, so functions have been written, like maybe create project, uh, update a project, delete a project or something like that. Uh, the next thing that was basically required was to build a scale I do. And um, although I was working on this internally for, uh, from my own project, because 
there were discussions when should be the repository be built right should we do we need a repository or not and um, so i was working on the uh, cli tool on my own um, local project as a local project so that being said um, after a while we have also got the repository which is uh, kubernetes slash slash obs cli um, it's pretty interesting it's it's basically new right uh, although i have raised a full first pull request basically i have added the types for the um for the cli section for the CLI tool, uh, it has been merged yet. Uh, that being said, a second pull request has also been raised. We are working on it currently, right? If we go through it, uh, if we go through that type, so so this this is basically generally uh, doing something like this. Um, so so the thing is that um, CLI tool is importing this library. If you can see this thing, it is importing this library, uh, importing the library that we have built. And then here we have just defined the types of the projects. So internally, we have also defined our example manifest. I, I think it's probably not here as by now, but I have raised it in the pull request section, right? If I go through this one, uh, reconcile command, if I go into the files changed, and then if I go here, uh, probably something like, uh, I guess there is, I have not yet pushed the example manifest, but I think uh, I'll do that as well. So the basic thing is that uh, the re there will be only one reconcile command for the OBS CLI that will be calling the OBS library that we have built here, right? Uh, in our manifest, uh, we have defined certain number of projects, certain number of packages. Uh, each project have certain packages and each uh, project has certain sub project with each sub project having certain sub packages underneath it. So so basic idea here is that uh, we are going to first compare some things. Uh, so we, the library that has been built, it mainly contains a three important function, not three, but four important function that is create, read, update, and delete from uh, the OBS. Uh, platform, right? Now, based on the example manifest, we are going to do a lot of things. Like we're going to check, uh, we, first of all, we're going to read the manifest file. And then we are going to check whether those certain project that has been defined in our manifest exist remotely or not. If it does not, try to check. Uh, if, it, if it does not exist, try to create it, right? If it exists and you see that some fields have been updated, try to create a, just update the, update the project that is ex existed on the OBS web UI, means remotely. So that's a basic approach on how this OBS CLI tool is going to be using. Uh, that being said, uh, what are the areas that you can contribute to? So there are a lot of areas that you can basically contribute to, right? Uh, this is basically the first thing that we have done probably uh, for this um, OBS CLI tool. But I think with time, we need a lot of things like testing as well. Uh, we also need to understand how the authentication and authorization will be working. Um, and this was basically the things that we have worked on so far. So we have built a library. We also built a CLI tool that is, which I think can be can be useful within uh, as soon as this PR gets merged. So uh, that's a plus plus win situation for each one of us. Um, also, for a fact, uh, I was here on the screen. Just let me do one thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was basically, you, get, you have already seen this release SDK. And OBS, you have already seen this library that we have built. You have also seen the OBS CLI repository that was being created, although it's in the initial phase. And there's a lot of things that needs to be done. But let's talk about the experience. And I, I could not thank Marco and Carlos Les. For example, uh, when I was applying for the version 1.29 release, I got basically rejected for the shadow program. And I was not so tense as to just a glimpse of it. So Marco literally gave a very good advice here, which I think I have I have noted it down in my blog as well. So, uh, so it's it's just like when you have a proper set of mentors alongside you who guide you at every point of time, the things becomes really easy and you're interested into doing that thing more and more often. So again, Marco is here and Carlos is not here, but if Carlos, if you're watching this, uh, a great shout out to you as well. And thank you because if the mentors were not there, it would not have been possible to just maybe get get the things done that we have done up till now. And uh, yeah, so this was just a uh, just probably a screenshot of a meeting that we were generally doing and doing some work. Um, 
And yeah, before we end this presentation, I just want to uh, make sure that if, if anyone of you applying for the LFX mentorship program or any, any program like that, uh, there are certain questions that comes, like what are the things that we need to do in order to get selected into any mentorship program? Um, for me, I would say that just be curious about the project. Uh, and once you're curious about the project, you will understand that, you'll understand a way, uh, be in touch with your mentors, present your thoughts on how are you going to solve this problem in, in basically in three months, right? Um, put your points out, contribute to the project and just being curious, ask your some questions like why, why, and you'll get your answers. I think one of the best advice that Marco also gave me was there is no such question which is called as good question. Each question is uh, is a question that is worthy being asked. So if you're attending meetings, come to the SIG release meetings and uh, apply for the release shadow program, which is a very good way to get started and contribute because that is the only way you will learn and grow and uh, sustain as well for a longer period of time. And that being said, that was my presentation and the work we have done so far. There's a lot of things that needs to be improved, but uh, we are happy to get more contributors here. And you can definitely reach out to us uh, on the Slack channel that is release management and ask more questions on how to get started with this. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that presentation. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? Nitish. I would just like to drop it for a moment. Go for it. I would just, uh, I just want to thank Nitish for his awesome work on this project. And everything, uh, including the OBS platform is even new for us. So we are discovering a lot of things and, and Nitish did a great job uh, navigating everything and making sure that we create the library and the CLI and everything that is high quality and that we will be able later on to use the production. I am looking forward to especially the request side of comment that is Nitish working on. And again, Nitish, thank you for working on this project. We really appreciate your work here. Awesome. You got to bunch of round of applause. So thanks for all the work. And thanks, Marco, for your, your mentoring during this process. <clears throat> okay, the last thing on our agenda is from Mohammed. Uh, looks like you're just looking for a couple of plus ones. Um, you want to briefly mention that or ask any questions or chat about it? Um, hi there. Um, yeah, so as Jeremy said, I'm looking for a couple of plus ones about PR. Um, so that's I'm working on Keepkins V2 without all the legacy craft that we can use for everything that's not KK, really. But the primary user for that today will be um, etcd because they want to do some stuff on ARM, um, which that image would allow you to do. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I'll give this a review after the meeting's done. I think that's really cool. Nice. Okay, I think that's the end of our agenda. Uh, Steven, you turned your video on. Did you want to say anything? I was, I was, I, I don't know what I was gearing up for uh, exactly, but um, but the uh, it's worth the end of the presentation. Um, and Natish, I think you 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 dropped a good point and and kind of riffing off of what Marco had mentioned, um, especially around this time, right? Um, this is the classic time of uh, time of year, time of quarter, time of every four months um, where we um, where we have to make a lot of uh, interesting um, decisions about uh, building the release team, uh, building uh, and, and choosing shadows, um, and it is a hard job to do. So um, first and foremost, thank you to all of the uh, the folks that are on the 130 release team that have uh, served on release teams prior. Um, the for folks who are applying to the release team, um, I, I just want to mention wholeheartedly that um, while the release team is an incredible way to contribute to the project, it is not the only way to contribute to the project, and it is not the only way to contribute to SIG release. Right? Um, I I give this this speech pep talk something 
uh, roughly every every cycle, some sometime during the the you know sometime during the meetings or or at the contrib summit, which is effectively um, the hope if you are on the release team or if you are in and around the release team is um, is that you identify problems, uh, identify uh, difficult problems to solve, um, problems that are um, problems that kind of expand beyond just the, the 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 constraints of the release team the constraints of that cycle um and you go and tackle right um for you to do that and i and i think you know there we have some great examples of, of folks who have done that in the past and several of those examples are folks that are currently on the sig release leadership team are currently uh, release manager associates uh release managers uh um and uh, are maybe really leading uh, either as some project owners leading the release team right now. Um, those folks have gone kind of above and beyond um, looking at what is written in handbook, um, looking at what the day-to-day -day expectations are and have categorized and classified sets of problems that are important to solve for the SIG and for the project, right? That is what we want to see. That is the goal, right? And that does not require you to be on the release team. So, um, uh, I, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I don't want to um, uh, say that rejection isn't hard. Um, the, uh, I, I, I do want to say that um, choosing, uh, choosing the release team is a difficult job for everyone involved, um, and and don't take that as a, don't take that as a deterrent from have it, from contributing to the project or to uh, the SIG. We have plenty of things to do, um, so if you're ever looking for things to do, we're happy to chat about that. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, does anybody else have any other quick items that they'd like to bring up or mention? Otherwise, we can end a few minutes early, give people back 10, 10 or so minutes of their day. I would just say really quickly on Stevens, we have a roadmap that was published in December. So if you haven't looked at the roadmap, it's a really great way to see what's going on in the SIG. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should probably add that as a topic for next time. We can go through that, kind of review it with folks, especially since I think a lot of that work was done in um, time that was like not super conducive to U.S. time. So during the U.S. meeting, U.S. friendly time, I guess, next week, we can go through that and review it. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a great rest of your week. And I uh, hope you're having a happy new year so far. See you later. It is to everyone. Bye-bye.